coming up today, meeting with US Defense Chief Ashton Carter at the Pentagon. President Park and Hay calls for boosting cooperation with the United States in cybersecurity and space to deal with North Korean threats. Dozens of professors from some of Korea's most prestigious universities protest the government's decision to take control of history textbooks used in secondary schools. Plus, in a huge policy reversal, U.S. President Barack Obama announces plans to extend U.S. military presence in Afghanistan beyond 2016. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Friday, October 16th here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, President Park and Hay on her third day in Washington held, paid a visit rather, to the Pentagon for the first time. There she reaffirmed the strong military ties between South Korea and the United States and pledged to further expand their cooperation. Hwang sang reports from Washington. Korea, thanks you. We go together. <laughs> that was President Park's key message during her visit to the Pentagon on Thursday. During her talks with U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter, President Park called for expanded cooperation in cybersecurity and space in their joint efforts to counter North Korean threats. Saying the U.S. commitment to South Korea is as firm as steel, Carter said he expected Seoul and Washington to closely cooperate in dealing with North Korea's provocations in the future. The meeting comes amid concerns of a possible long-range rocket launch by North Korea. President Park also met with South Korean and American soldiers, calling them the core of their strong alliance. <laughs> Following her visit to the Pentagon, President Park held a luncheon meeting with U.S. Vice President Joe Biden at the Naval Observatory. The two reaffirmed the South Korea-U.S. alliance and agreed to further strengthen their bilateral cooperation on both regional and global issues. President Park also met with U.S. officials and academics at the Center for Strategic and International Studies to explain South Korea's diplomatic policies. She will wrap up her four-day visit on Friday by holding a summit with U.S. President Barack Obama. Hwang sung Arirang News, Washington. Seoul's Unification Ministry has released the final list of North Korean families who will take part in the upcoming reunions of families separated by the Korean War. The list includes 96 families who will be reunited with 394 South Korean relatives in the first round of reunions. These will begin on October 20th for a three-day run at North Korea's Mount Gumgang Resort. The oldest participants from the North are 88 years old. The ministry says one family from the North had to be withdrawn as their South Korean relatives had to cancel due to health issues. On Thursday, South Korean Red Cross officials crossed the border for a final checkup on the event. The second round of reunions will take place from October 24th, also for three days, with 90, 90 South Korean families expected to meet their relatives from the north. Recent satellite imagery shows North Korea is continuing to develop a submarine-launched ballistic missile program. Experts believe Pyongyang could master the technology within the next five years. Kim Hyun Bin reports. According to the North Korea specialized website 38 North on Wednesday, a vertical launch tube capable of launching a submarine-launched ballistic missile is being developed at the Shinpo South shipyard in the north. CNN has also reported on October 9th, a day before the 70th anniversary of the founding of North Korea's Workers' Party, that Pyongyang could conduct an SOBM test in the near future. 
North Korea has successfully test-launched an SLBM, but no word has come out about its development. Based on the imagery, it looks like Pyongyang is trying to enhance its rocket capabilities, and we expect them to be implemented in its navy within the next five years. The website said that the satellite imagery from last month indicates that a temporary superstructure has been erected to conduct stabilization, fire control systems, and ejection tests. Experts say if the SLBM is integrated, it will become a grave threat not only to the region, but also to the United States. If North Korea's SLBM is integrated, Seoul as well as Tokyo and Washington will be threatened. It is hard to detect SLBM, so South Korea needs to enhance its Korea air and missile defense system and other surveillance capabilities. The website also pointed out that the modernization of construction halls and machine shops, which started in June of 2014, seems to be almost complete, leading experts to presume that the regime is most likely to carry another SLBM test launch very soon. Kim Hyun-bin, IDN News. Korea's defense ministry has reiterated that Japan cannot enter Korean territory without Seoul's permission. Defense ministry spokesman Kim Min-sak was clarifying remarks made on Wednesday by Prime Minister Hwang kyo -an. Hwang said the Japanese military could advance into Korea after consulting with the Korean government in certain limited situations and within necessary boundaries. The prime minister faced criticism that his statement wasn't strong enough. Now, concerns over Japan's greater military role abroad have grown with Tokyo's passage of security legislation last month. The new laws permit Japan's military to fight alongside its allies even when not under attack. A growing number of university professors in Korea are voicing their opposition to a government plan to issue a single state-authorized history textbook. Many have said that they'll refuse to help write the book. Park ji reports. Dozens of history professors from the country's most prestigious universities, including Korea and Yonsei University, have issued statements against the government's decision to publish a single history textbook starting in 2017. Thirteen history professors at Yonsei University issued a statement earlier this week saying they will not participate in the process of making the textbook in any way. They were joined by 22 history professors at Korea University who said they can't allow the government to push ahead with the plan and nine history professors at Gyeonggi University who issued a similar statement. More statements were issued Thursday by professors at several more universities, including Ihua Women's, Busan National, and Songgyungwan. And as the momentum builds, more university faculty members are considering joining the campaign. Against this backdrop, Korea's rival parties continue to promote their positions on the matter. The conservative ruling Senori Party held a general meeting for its lawmakers on Thursday to confirm its view that the current textbooks should be corrected in consideration of Korea's unique situation as a country divided. It is paramount for students to establish a proper, balanced perspective on the nation, as Korea is the world's only divided country where the deep pangs of ideological confrontation remain. On the other side of the political aisle, the main opposition party hailed the professor's statements. University professors have declared their objections at the risk of incurring disadvantages from the education ministry in university evaluations, research funds and the like. We respect their conscience. The party says it is planning to organize rallies outside parliament in conjunction with the general public and academia to pressure the government to withdraw the plan. The education ministry is stated to confirm its decision early next month. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. Now, an opposition party lawmaker is under fire from all sides after claiming the 2012 presidential election was rigged. The ruling party has adopted a resolution against Kang Dong-won. His own party has dismissed him from a parliamentary committee. Ji Myung gil has more. The ruling Senori Party took action on Thursday against main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy lawmaker Kang Dong-won, who is currently under fire for saying that the 2012 presidential election was rigged in favor of current leader Park Geun-hye. 
Our party has adopted a resolution to denounce lawmaker Kang Dong-won for his misdeeds. Kang has committed an act of political terrorism and insulted the Korean people. The ruling party submitted Kang's case to the National Assembly's Ethics Committee and urged MPAD to punish him for his remarks. In response, the opposition dismissed Kang from the National Assembly's House Steering Committee, though it will not demand he give up his Assembly seat. MPAD leader Moon Jae-in repeated an earlier statement that Kang's remarks represent his opinion and not that of the party. Moon also accused the ruling party of having hidden motives for making such a fuss about the incident. The ruling party is trying to use this incident to cover up the current uproar over state-authored textbooks. The party should not overreact to Kang's remarks. The National Election Commission released a statement on Wednesday refuting Kang and said the vote count in 2012 was accurate and transparent. That year, Park geun ran a close race against her main rival, Moon Jae-in, with Park receiving 51.6 percent of the vote and Moon, the current opposition leader, taking 48 percent. Kim young Arirang News. Now, in a big policy U-turn, U.S. President Barack Obama says American troops will remain in Afghanistan for the time being to assist with an increasingly fragile security situation there. Obama announced his decision at the White House on Thursday. He said the U.S. will maintain its current force of nearly 10,000 troops through next year and draw down to 5,500 when he leaves office in January 2017. Obama called the plan a modest but meaningful extension of the U.S. military mission in, in, in Afghanistan, which he originally said would end next year. The U.S. president stressed the decision came after a lengthy review with his top advisers. He expressed hope his successor will continue to evaluate U.S. involvement going forward. U.S. troops will carry on their dual missions in Afghanistan, counter-terrorism operations and training and assisting local security forces. Volkswagen says it will recall around 8.5 million diesel engine vehicles in the European Union after the German government forced its hand. The automaker made the announcement after Germany demanded that all Volkswagen cars sold with software that enabled them to cheat emissions testing be recalled. VW Group had previously suggested that owners bring their cars into dealerships for repairs on a voluntary basis. The mandatory recall constitutes slightly more than 30% of Volkswagen's total car sales between the affected 2009 to 2015 model years. Some analysts say the scandal could cost the German auto giant up to 40 billion US dollars to cover repairs, regulatory fines and lawsuits. And it's not only Volkswagen feeling the heat over recalls. Kia Motors is going to recall almost 420,000 Sorento SUVs in the United States and Canada. The Korean automaker says the cars can be shifted out of park when the driver's foot isn't on the brake, which could cause the vehicle to roll away. According to documents filed by Kia with the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the recall affects Sorentos from the 2011 through 2013 model years. More than 377,000 vehicles are subject to the recall in the US, 42,000 in Canada. The recall is expected to begin from November 24th in the United States and December 1st in Canada. Now, Korea is known for being a trendsetter in technology and it's ready to do the same with 3D printing. Not surprising since Korea has a rich centuries-old printing heritage. For a look at a festival that lets visitors take a look back and ahead at Korea's printing technology, Oh Soo Young reports. At this studio in Central Seoul, you can make your ideas come to life through 3D printing. Each Thursday, anyone can come by to print anything from drones to smaller architectural pieces, all for free. In this way, we're helping people easily create and share their crafts. The studio is one of similar centres popping up in Seoul, allowing easy access to Korea's advanced printing technology. 
In fact, Korea excels in various kinds of printing, not just the 3D variety. And at this festival in Seoul, you can experience the country's abundant printing culture, which dates back centuries. Displaying antique machinery and age old techniques, the festival introduces Korea's fruitful printing heritage, which laid the foundation for the country's present day advancement in printing. Korea's woodblock printing can be traced back to the 8th century, and the book Chikji was published in the early 13th century. It's the world's oldest existing book to be printed with metal movable type, as confirmed by UNESCO. Visitors can also experiment with these latest printing gadgets, such as 3D and digital. Normally, when you think of printing, it seems very technical and rigid, but we had a lot of fun today playing with all sorts of printing methods. There's also an exhibition of this year's award-winning printing works, from photography books to brightly colored package designs. Korea exports a lot of printing material, up to 300 million U.S. dollars worth in 2013. But not many people are aware of its rich printing culture. So our festival aims to promote this. With open events like these, Korea's excellence in printing is becoming widely accessible for the public to enjoy. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. Well, those are the stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website, adidang.com forward slash news. Have a great day. Goodbye.